Okay. Um, hello, good evening, to, good evening to everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, hello? sir. Yes. yes. Okay, yes. very good. So uh, we're going to start. Uh, I, I just had some problems with my computer. My apologies for being late. Okay. So we're going to start. Uh, right now, um, as you remember yesterday, we were discussing some things related to um, topic and we have on platform of English Corporativo. So right now we are going to continue um, verifying those topics and also verifying those contents that suppose that we're going to be completing tonight. Uh, give me just one moment uh, while I share my screen to you, okay? Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, no? No, not, not yet. It's okay. Yes, ah, okay, very good. So we're going to, um, we're going now to uh, just check the information that we were uh, discussing yesterday, and I'm going to share the photo in order to see uh, how many of you uh, have already completed this activity. What I see here is just that, um, just four, uh, no, I mean, five people has already completed this exercise, I guess. Nobody else did the time to complete this, okay? Uh, later on, I'm going to check who was the, the, I mean, who were the ones that um, complete this activity, okay? So right now, we're going to move to the lesson objective 5.2. And um, here we are going to find, uh, find I mean, um, the following. It says, um, in this class, you will learn how to use noun phrases containing relative clauses. Okay, that's going to be the aim of this, uh, of this lesson. Um, here we have a video where we're going to see uh, noun phrases containing relative clauses as subjects. And also we are going to see uh, later on um, some noun phrases containing relative clauses as an object, okay? Uh, remember, uh, I guess that some time ago we were discussing about uh, the uses of relatives and uh, when do we use that and when do we use uh, who, in order to uh, express an idea as an English, okay? So um, basically, th this is what we're going to be discussing. First of all, we're going to, um, as I said before, we're going to check the, the video uh, that corresponds to relative classes as subjects, okay? Uh, pay attention, then I'm going to extend the information uh, to you. Okay, uh, and let me know if you can hear the audio because uh, this video has an audio that we have to list. I'm going to play it right now. Hi everyone. By the end of this class you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. So let's get started by me asking you a few questions which you should be able to answer with no problems at all by the end of this class. When traveling to another country, would you be nervous about being far away from your family? Would you feel insecure about traveling alone? Would you be enthusiastic about making new friends? By the end of this class, you'll be able to use noun phrases which contain relative clauses in order to express your ideas when it comes to traveling. So let me present some structure at this particular moment. What we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to make sense of these noun phrases which contain relative clauses. Uh, first, we'll start talking a little bit about how we use this as a subject. Uh, then we'll move into the object, probably the object, I'll separate this into a different lecture. 
so uh, in order to form this kind of um, expressions first we're going to have a subject so in this case this subject becomes one thing uh, then this is followed by a relative clause I really miss and then we're going to have the uh, verb to be uh, in this case as you can see is the verb to be is and then that's followed by um, an object or a phrase if you will so let's write that specific sentence down and then we're going to try to make sense of it as I mentioned so let me do that at this point okay all right so as I mentioned uh, one thing sorry one thing becomes the subject of the sentence I've I've colored that in green so we can uh, see the difference between what's a verb and what's a what's a uh, what's a subject, what's a relative clause, what's a verb, and what's the object of this particular idea. Then this is followed by the relative clause. I, I colored this in blue so you can see what, what I'm referring to as a relative clause. And then the verb to be. Now, now the verb to be needs to match with the subject, if you will. So if the subject uh, were to be plural, then this should change to are. Um, and then it's followed by the object of the sentence. So in this case, my mom's cooking is the object of the sentence. What we're going to do right now is we're going to include a lot of uh, relative clauses uh, so that you can see that uh, this topic could, it can become a little bit confusing. But if we understand uh, this structure, it, it shouldn't be difficult to complete. So let me include um, lots of relative clauses. All right. And... What we're going to do is we're going to try to make sense of it, but we're going to try to uh, make different sentences with them. All right. So um, I mentioned one thing. Um, you could you could express this idea by saying something. Right. Uh, you could also say two people or you can say two things or you can say uh, two things that I miss would be. And then you mentioned what those things are. Um, but um, let's try to make sense of it here. Um, so one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. So I've included uh, a few relative clauses. And let me get you to answer this by me asking you the question. So what would you be nervous about when traveling to another country? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? What would you be curious about? What would you be enthusiastic about? What would you be fascinated by? Um, let's say that we choose the country, uh, maybe France, all right? So France seems like a very touristic place. And I think that a lot of people would like to travel to this particular country. So let's do that second one. One thing I'd be nervous about is, all right, that's going to follow the bird to be. And maybe for me is getting lost, all right? Uh, let me try to keep the format a little bit because I want you to notice that we have one thing is the noun, uh, the relative clauses I'll be nervous about. Then this is followed by the verb to be. And then this will be followed by the object of the sentence. Okay, so for me, one thing I really be nervous about, or one thing I'll be nervous about is getting lost. One thing I'll be anxious about is getting to know this new city. One thing I'll be comfortable with is the weather. One thing I'd be curious about is learning about the country's culture. One thing I'd be enthusiastic about is learning the new language. One thing I'd be fascinated by is getting to know the history behind the architecture in that particular city. And so you get the idea. Um, so if we follow this pattern, subject plus relative clause plus verb to be plus the object, then we shouldn't uh, have any difficulties expressing these ideas. Uh, just one last thing that I would like to mention that if I change the subject to plural, okay, I will need to change the verb to be and I will also need to change the object because both things need to be plural. They need to match with whatever the subject is. So for example, two things I really miss are my mom's cooking in my room at home. Okay, that's just to give you an example. And if, if the subject changes to something plural, then you will need to do the same for uh, the rest. 
So what I would like for you to do now is to practice this concept, but now answer this in your own way. So what would you be nervous about? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? And try to give as many. Okay, um, we're going to stop there because um, we are going to work on the activity first. Guys, um, it, first of all, I don't know if you have any questions regarding today's part, today, the related um, clauses and non phrases. Have you ever used um, this structure before? Yes, no? No, teacher, in my case, it's the first time. It's your first time, okay. Good, uh, what, what I'm going to do right now the, um, here with this topic is just to uh, mix in um, a little bit more information regarding to the uses of known um, phrases uh, containing relative clubs, because that's the aim of, of this um, lesson uh, that we're going to be working on um, tonight. So um, first of all, um, when we use known phrases uh, as uh, we continue to write the class as a subject, there we are going to find um, that we have expressions like uh, one thing, something, uh, two people. Uh, we have also um, a relative clause that is going to be separated or not uh, with uh, the connector that, okay? Or uh, because in this case, going to be uh, what we're going to be uh, working this is uh, if we want to add that, so it's going to be correct, but if not, also it's going to be correct if we use this kind of uh, um, structure. Uh, when we use relative clauses, we have to remember that um, um, relative clauses are just information and extra information um, that we are going to add to a sentence in order to be more specific, in order to provide more information to the person that is listening to us. Um, there we have like one thing uh, that I really miss. So I really miss uh, is just expressing something uh, extra um, like uh, to the, to the uh, main part that I'm going to use in order to express something in English. Like um, I really miss, uh, I've been nervous about, I eat meal every day. So things like that we can include here in this kind of sentence. Uh, if you can see there, um, the known phrases like one thing, something, two people, um, it's gonna be always subject. Because in this case, we are going to need a sub in order to construct this kind of sentence. Uh, but we are use, using uh, phrases, noun phrases there. Um, Another thing that uh, we have to take uh, care about is the use of the verb, because um, he mentioned something that if we use a subject, it's gonna be plural, so that means that the verb must be plural too. Um, and, and also the object uh, that we're going to be referring to must be plural. So everything has to match here uh, with uh, this um, structure, okay? So, um, if we have uh, some examples of it, about the uses of the relative clauses, like one thing I would really miss, that this is gonna be like the relative clause we wanna be using uh, for this structure. Uh, we have some others like I'd be nervous about, I'd, I'd be anxious about, I'd be comfortable with, and I'd be curious about. Um, so if we just follow this pattern, um, we are going to, it's gonna be easy for us in order to construct sentences using um, noun phrases and related clauses, okay? So, uh, but just take a look here. Uh, the first one, it says, one thing I really miss uh, is my mom's cooking. Uh, if you see here, we are just using singular, so that's mean the verb gonna be using the verb to be that we are going to be using is gonna be is, okay? Um, in case if we use uh, the people, for instance, who or that, I mean every day, um, is and want to say um, we're going to include also an object uh, to in a specific sentence. Uh, for instance, there we have in this example uh, my parents. Okay, and check just this information. We're using are instead of is because we are referring to two people. 
So, because this is plural. Eh, realmente, este, chicos, este tipo de estructura, si nosotros seguimos este patrón específico para expresar ideas este, en inglés, no vamos a tener ningún problema. Eh, realmente es utilizar este, un sujeto dentro de una oración, utilizar una información extra para proveer este, o ser más específicos eh, con la persona que nosotros estamos hablando. Cuando nosotros utilizamos una este, cláusula relativa, eh, prácticamente eh, nosotros estamos incluyendo una oración completa que va a tener siempre los mismos elementos. Eh, sujeto, verbo. ¿Sí? Sujeto, verbo. Ahora, en este tipo de oraciones se le conoce como Relative Clauses porque este, nosotros, ah, bueno, la, la misma palabra eh, lo identifica si son relativas, ¿sí? Aparte de eso, eh, provee más información a la persona que nos, que nos escucha. Eh, cuando nosotros hacemos uso también de estas eh, cláusulas relativas, nosotros debemos tener en cuenta que dentro de la cláusula relativa no se encuentra el verbo principal, ¿sí? Una oración de este tipo puede funcionar sin una cláusula relativa, ¿sí? Nosotros podemos utilizarla sin uh, una cláusula este, relativa. Sin embargo, el sentido de esta oración no estaría este, eh, complementada eh, por la información que nosotros estamos brindando, ¿sí? Uh, just take a look of the first example there, and it says uh, one thing, okay, that I really miss is mom's cooking, okay? One thing I miss is my mom cooking, okay? So uh, we can use something like that in order to express that, uh, in this case, we're missing something, okay? But we are really missing something. And what, um, what are we missing? So mom's cooking. And um, the second example that we have there, it says something um, I've been nervous about is making new friends. Okay. So, uh, vamos a ver. Cuando nosotros, eh, en, este, en, este, en estas estructuras en sí, eh, a pesar de que nosotros podemos construir una oración, la eh, cláusula relativa nos permite a nosotros darnos a entender de una mejor forma, o sea, dentro de la oración que nosotros estamos construyendo, nosotros debemos eh, eh, darle un enfoque específico a este, a este tipo este, de, de oración, um, con el objetivo de pues, que la persona que nos esté escuchando comprenda el mensaje que nosotros estamos queriendo transmitir. Dentro eh, de esa cláusula relativa, después viene el verbo. El verbo siempre eh, vamos a utilizar el to be, ¿sí? Siempre vamos a utilizar el to be porque es el que nos va a permitir conectar eh, la, la estructura en sí este, con un objeto. ¿sí? Llamémosle al objeto un complemento de la oración. Um, eh, una cosa que vamos a, voy a traducir la primera este, oración. Eh, una cosa que yo este, realmente extrañaría es... Y nosotros vamos a utilizar este, el, el objeto. En este caso, el objeto de la oración es muy importante. ¿Por qué? Porque si nosotros no completamos la oración con el objeto de la oración, con el complemento en sí, nosotros eh, nos quedaríamos este, como en un suspenso. ¿sí? Eh, no estamos terminando de complementar nuestra oración. Um, y esto solamente es con el uso de eh, este, los, los relative clauses este, como, un, eh, como parte de un sujeto dentro de la oración. En sí, esto está funcionando a, pas, a pesar de que esté eh, este estructurada como una oración, en este caso, en, en, en futuro simple, eh, perdón, este, en presente simple como modal, eh, nosotros necesitamos cada uno de los elementos para que a la hora que expresemos una idea, pues eh, seamos este, bastante claros con el mensaje. Ahora, este patrón que nosotros tenemos aquí es el que nosotros utilizamos casi siempre cuando eh, eh, expresamos ideas, haciendo uso de las relative clauses. Eh, 
eh, este patrón pues eh, simplemente cambia eh, el tipo de cláusula que se utiliza en la oración. De ahí lo demás nosotros pues podemos complementarlo, al igual que el sujeto. Eh, nosotros podemos este, utilizar one thing, two things, three people, four people, uh, y así sucesivamente. Pero dependiendo el sujeto que utilicemos, eso debe coincidir con el verbo y también con el objeto. Bien, este, vamos a trabajar ahorita eh, este tipo de oraciones en el cual vamos a utilizar un sujeto. En este caso, el sujeto podría ser one thing, something, or two people. Podemos incluir más. Vamos a ver. ¿Alguien escribe por aquí? Ok. Um, ok, sí, eh, Lorena. Don't worry. Bien. Eh, siempre y cuando nosotros sigamos este patrón, este, nosotros podemos construir ese tipo de oraciones. Es decir, el, el, con respecto al sujeto, el sujeto puede ser one thing, something, two people, o podemos incluir pues, eh, otro tipo de sujeto, en este caso, que haga un match, que se relacione con la oración. Eh, vamos a trabajar, siguiendo el patrón, este, estas cuatro oraciones. Um, I be nervous about, I be anxious about, and I be comfortable with, and the last one is going to be, I be curious about. Completemos con un sujeto, un verbo y un objeto de la oración. Reescriban la oración completa y colóquenla en el espacio del chat box. Eh, aquí en, en, en la plataforma de Zoom. ¿De acuerdo? Trabajemos en eso ahorita. Solo son cuatro oraciones. Complementemos. Si alguien tiene alguna pregunta, pues puede hacerlo. ¿Qué nos dice por aquí? Pretty show again the sentence este. Ah, oh, perdón, este había quitado las oraciones. That second one. One thing I'll... Ahora, aquí está. Son estas cuatro. ¿Se visualiza? Yes, teacher. Muy bien, excelente. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, uh, good evening. You hear me? Excuse me for a right now. <laughs> no, don't worry, Angela. Don't worry. Thank you, uh, okay, so Angela, here we are working right now uh, in the um, unit, I mean, lesson 5.2. We are just uh, reviewing the information of relative clauses. Uh, I mean, the noun phrases with relative clauses. 
Uh, right now, we are just completing these uh, sentences. We are going to include a subject. We're going to include a vert. In this case, it's going to be vert to be plus a, an object or complement. Okay. So you okay, have to complete this, uh, these four sentences. Okay. Okay, teacher. Um, okay. I'm not leaving because I is is raining in this morning. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, yeah. I see. Okay, do you finish? I'm just checking here that just Lorena has already completed the activity. What about the rest of you? I've been nervous about. Not yet, teacher. Not yet. Okay. Not yet, thanks. What about the others? Uh, uh, Jose? I'm working on it, teacher. Okay, good. Okay, I will give you just three more minutes, okay? And then we're going to be back.
Okay, time is over. So we're going to move to the next uh, topic. I was just checking here my uh, uh, computer that just um, Marcela, let me see who else, uh, Lorena, Joanna, uh, Jensi. Jensi has just completed one. Teacher uh, is, is writing in the chat. Yes, in the chat box. Oh. Here in Zoom. Okay, teacher, thank you. Oh, okay, I, I think, no, nobody else has right here. Yes, um, it's in the in the chat here in Zoom. Okay, okay, guys. Um, now we're going to move to the next part. That is, is. Uh, using non phrases, a uh, continuing uh, relative classes, but in this case, going to be uh, use it as uh, an object. Okay, uh, just pay attention to this part because the structure is a little bit different. Um, it, it, you they're going to find that um, the subject in this case is going to be inverted to, to with I mean um, a, the the relative clause that, that we are going to use because a relative clause is going to be at the end. Um, the structure is going to be subject plus verb to be plus noun plus um, the relative clause. Pay attention here. Then I'm going to explain a little more a little bit more in this topic. Okay. Let me know if you cannot hear the audio. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. In our previous class, we learned how to express these ideas. And what we focused on learning was how to express the, these ideas and using the noun phrases as the subject of our sentence. What we're going to do today is we're going to focus on the right side of this chart and we're going to learn how to use the noun phrases as the object of our sentence. So if you recall our previous lesson we learned one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. And we learned this sort of formula here subject plus relative clause plus the verb to be and then the object uh, that, that's the activity. What we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to borrow this object and we're going to turn that into the subject of our sentence. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep one of those ideas there so you can see exactly what happens whenever we make that particular change. What we want to do is we want to change this statement, one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking, into my mom's cooking is one thing I really miss. By the way, it's important to mention, and I think I did not mention this in our previous lesson, that what you see in parentheses is optional. That means that you can either use it or you know, exclude it from your sentence. So one thing that I really miss is my mom's cooking, that's correct. But also if you just say one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking, either one of those two sentences is correct. Let me write this structure down so you can see what's going to happen whenever we make this change. As I mentioned previously, what we want to do is we want to change this noun phrase that is being used as the subject. That means that the noun phrase, one thing I really miss, is the subject of our sentence. Uh, and basically what we want to do is we want to change that into being the object of our sentence, as you can see here in our next example. So um, the structure is the following. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have, uh, we're going to change my mom's cooking into that being the subject of our sentence. All right. So let me go ahead and write that down. I'm going to say my, my mom's cooking. That's becomes the subject of our sentence now. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to make sure that um, uh, this is quite clear. So I'm going to uh, put in those spaces there. So I'm also going to go ahead and change that color to make sure that we um, see what's happening. Right. So that's in green. The subject is in green. So I'm, I'm changing my mom's cooking, which was the object of our previous sentence to that being the subject of our sentence now. Now, notice that the verb to be also changes in location and the verb to be follows the subject. So my mom's cooking 
All right, and that's the bird to be is. Let me change the color there as well. Okay, there we go. Uh, then this follows the noun phrase. All right. So what do I mean by the noun phrase? Uh, well, uh, uh, previously was the subject of her sentence, and also that would follow the relative clause. So literally, this is what I'm going to put here. I separated it so that you could see actually what happened there. All right. Uh, but the, the noun, uh, and I, I think I colored that differently. So let me make sure everything matches here. All right, um, and that's basically what happened. Just a couple of things changed. Number one, we had to change the object of our previous sentence to that being the subject of our new sentence. So my mom's cooking. Uh, and then that followed the verb to be. So the verb to be follows the subject. My mom's cooking is one thing I really miss. If we look at our previous examples, the ones that we did in our previous lesson, uh, in which we said one thing I'd be nervous about is getting lost. So let's say that I wanted to change this idea and I wanted to use this uh, noun phrase, but now being used as the object, all right? Um, and, and so let me write that idea down. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this. Uh, this activity getting lost, which in our previous sentence was the object of our sentence, and we're going to change it to the subject. So, for example, we'll say getting lost. All right, that's that's uh, that becomes the subject of our sentence. Okay, that follows the verb to be is, and then um, that will follow uh, the noun phrase. All right, so we're going to say is uh, one thing. Okay, and then that follows the relative class. I'll be um, nervous about. All right. Uh, very important. I want you to notice what happens with this preposition. This preposition uh, will typically go at the very end, as you can see. So I want to emphasize this real quick. Um, and what I would like for you to do is to use um, the same ideas that you wrote down in the previous class, but change the order of them. The goal is to practice. As you can see, um, we, we have the same ideas here in the example. Something I'd be nervous about is making new friends. What we do is we change the order of this and we say making new friends is something I'd be nervous about or making new friends is something that I would be nervous about. Um, two people I email every day are my parents. My parents are two people I would email every day. So what I would like for you to do is to practice making the previous sentences to... Okay, um, there is going to give just the instructions about the uh, other homework, but we're not going to develop that homework because we are going to work on an exercise that's going to be uh, online. I will share the, the web page later. But um, I'm going to switch to Spanish in order to explain this part, okay? Cuando nosotros utilizamos este, los nombres frases, los, los eh, digamos, la estructura en sí este, de los dumb phrases, uh, cuando incluimos nosotros una cláusula relativa como un objeto dentro de una oración, nosotros vamos a hacer unos pequeños cambios eh, en referencia a las otras oraciones que nosotros teníamos previamente. Si ustedes ven eh, por acá, tenemos my mom's cooking. Okay? My mom's cooking en esta oración es parte de lo que nosotros como, conocemos como un objeto de la oración, que sería básicamente esta parte que se, se muestra aquí. Ahora bien, eh, para nosotros poder utilizar los non phrases con los, eh, las cláusulas relativas, nosotros debemos tomar el objeto de la oración al que nosotros estamos re haciendo referencia en, la, en el primer ejemplo y colocarlo como un sujeto. Observemos esto. El, el complemento, el objeto de la oración pasa automáticamente a ser parte del sujeto. Al tener nosotros este tipo de sujeto, my mom's cooking, que sería como este, una frase en sí que nosotros podemos utilizar eh, 
para eh, expresar este, eh, o identificar, mejor dicho, eh, dentro de una oración, un, um, eh, digamos, uh, de quién nosotros hablamos o de qué nosotros hablamos en la oración, ¿sí? Eh, haciendo referencia al, a, al nombre en sí que nosotros damos, el sujeto que nosotros utilizamos este, dentro de esa oración. Nosotros vamos a decir, my mom's cooking. Ahora, para nosotros poder eh, utilizar este tipo de sujeto, vamos a hacer uso del verbo to be. El verbo to be iría este, justo después de la eh, expresión, en este caso el, el, la, la, el sujeto, ¿sí? Utilizamos nosotros el sujeto más el verbo to be y dependerá eh, el verbo to be este del nombre que, del sujeto que nosotros estemos utilizando. En este caso podría ser un plural o podría ser un singular. Si es singular, utilizamos y. Si es plural, utilizamos nosotros are. Ahora, aquí viene lo interesante. Cuando nosotros hacemos este cambio de poner el objeto de la oración como sujeto y luego precedido por el, por el verbo, vamos a utilizar nosotros un nombre. Este nombre sería lo que nosotros habíamos utilizado anterior como un uh, sujeto dentro de la oración. A partir de aquí, nosotros podemos agregar lo que es la cláusula relativa. Estamos indicando entonces que a partir del nombre, nosotros tenemos lo que se conoce como un objeto de la oración o complemento de la oración. Ok. Um, la oración en sí, este nos diría, no, no, al traducir al español sería, uh, eh, perdón, este, al, al mantenerlo en inglés, nosotros diríamos, mom's cooking um, is one thing that. Ok. My mom's cooking is one thing that. Cuando nosotros utilizamos esa expresión en sí, a partir del dat, que este puede, decíamos nosotros, puede ser este, eh, opcional o, o simplemente porque nosotros lo podemos agregar, porque de ambas formas eh, está correcto. Un segundo. Bueno, de ambas formas está correcto. Este, eh, simplemente agregamos la, la expresión en sí que correspondería a la, um, a la partícula de la oración que se le conoce como una cláusula relativa. Ahora, las cláusulas relativas dentro de este tipo de oración son subordinadas, porque estas dependen en sí este, de eh, un nombre. Eh, en el caso, en el, en el segundo tipo de oración, ¿verdad? dependen en sí de un nombre para que ésta tenga sentido. ¿sí? Eh, no podemos usarlas arbitrariamente eh, porque no estarían dando en sí una... Eh, un mensaje claro a la persona que nos está escuchando. Déjenme solamente revisar algo. Bueno, aquí está. Disculpen la interrupción, solo estaba este, revisando un mensaje de uno de sus compañeros. Bien, um, tenemos aquí nosotros eh, la oración en sí. Eh, cuando nos, si, si nosotros lo traducimos este, al español, eh, nosotros diríamos um, algo como la cocina de mi mamá es este, una cosa que yo realmente extrañaré o, o en este caso extrañaría. ¿Sí? Utilizando este, el, el, el verbo eh, auxiliar would. ¿okay? Cuando nosotros traducimos esta oración, nos damos cuenta que eh, la primera parte donde decimos nosotros la cocina de mi mamá. ¿sí? Esta es un, algo que se le conoce como un nombre frase. Ahora, no confundamos este tipo de nombre frase porque este tipo de nombre eh, frase no contiene este, una eh, cláusula relativa, sino que está directamente expresando algo eh, haciendo uso de un verbo directo. ¿sí? La cocina de mi mamá es. Ahí tenemos nosotros una oración bien clara. Ahora, a partir del es, nosotros podemos agregar otros tipos de, 
de este, eh, complemento, no necesariamente las, las cláusulas relativas que nosotros tenemos aquí. Eh, esto lo digo porque este, en la oración anterior nosotros sí necesitamos este, hacer uso de la cláusula relativa para eh, expresar una idea como un sujeto, como objeto, ¿no? Eh, aquí nosotros, la primera parte de la oración, eh, nosotros ya estamos expresando o utilizando una oración que está gramaticalmente este, eh, construida correctamente, ¿sí? Eh, la cocina de mi mamá es, eh, digamos... ¿Qué, ¿Qué podríamos agregar como complemento? Ayúdenme por ahí. Que no sea este parte de una, de una cláusula relativa. Sería la cocina de mi mamá es... ¿Qué le podemos agregar? Ayúdenme. Un complemento necesitamos. O déjenme pensar. Um, Uh, Hola. La cocina de mi mamá, dice. Sí, la cocina de mi mamá, pero a, a traducir al español, este, pues, se, es eh, en referencia a, a, a lo que ella cocina, no en sí al, al, al instrumento para cocinar. Ajá, la cocina de mi mamá es deliciosa. Eh, Muy bien. Apetitosa. Apetitosa, eh, excelente. A, a, quedémonos con esas dos, esas dos frases. Deliciosa y apetitosa. Si yo utilizo, my mom's cooking is delicious, um, a nosotros vamos a, a, a entender el mensaje que nos, da, nos está dando la otra persona. Sí, claramente. Porque es una oración que tiene un sentido este, propio. ¿sí? Ahora, cuando yo utilizo la oración y digo, my mom's cooking is one thing, y la cocina de mi mamá es eh, una cosa, digo. Ah, una cosa que... Y me quedo yo con la, con la duda, ¿sí? Ahora, eh, no podemos utilizar arbitrariamente este, un nombre para expresar algo, sino que tiene que ser este, en sí algo que nosotros estemos describiendo directamente. Si yo utilizo un nombre como un complemento, voy a necesitar una cláusula relativa que la complemente, ¿sí? Eh, o, o dicho de otra forma, esta, este no phrase debe contener en sí este, una um, oración relativa, una cláusula relativa que permita a la persona que nos escucha entender el mensaje. Si nosotros complementamos esa, eh, esa oración, podríamos decir la cocina de mi mamá, es algo que este, eh, yo extrañaré. ¿sí? Eh, es algo que este, me hace ilusión. Es algo que eh, me trae recuerdos, ¿sí? Ven como este, el, este, el, es algo que eh, por sí solo no da un sentido a la oración, sino que necesitamos como una oración extra llamada cláusula relativa que complementa el significado de este ya eh, la oración completa, ¿sí? ¿Sí me doy a entender con eso? Sí. ¿Sí? ¿No? ¿Tienen preguntas de momento? Les quiero compartir a ustedes un, uh, un enlace donde nosotros vamos a encontrar este tipo de este, eh, non-phrases con with relative clauses. Voy a dejar de compartir por cuestiones de copyright, no les puedo mostrar en, en pantalla, pero este, se los voy a enviar, perdón, se los voy a enviar al grupo de WhatsApp. Directamente. Dame un segundo. Quieren encontrar ustedes más información respecto a eso. Mis disculpas.
quiero encontrar ustedes más ejemplos y este, unas estructuras en sí de cómo se utilizan este, ambas. Um, y en este enlace, este, va, en el primer enlace vamos a encontrar la información. Ahorita se los, se los comparto. Aquí está. ¿Listo? Va, ya lo recibieron. ¿Ya les cayó? ¿No? ¿Sí? ¿No? No, teacher. No, teacher. No, teacher. No, teacher. Ah, ok. Paso aquí. Ah, no, es pre-advances. Pre Las disculpas. Está enviando el enlace a otro, a otro chat. Ahora sí. Aquí está. Ahora sí, ¿lo recibieron? Yes, teacher. Thank you. Bueno, ahí vamos a encontrar nosotros, les, les decía este, hace un momento, uh, información. Ahora les quiero compartir ahorita unos ejercicios de Relative Clauses eh, que eh, complementan este, este tema en sí. Denme un segundo. Aquí está. Este es directamente de Relative Clauses, no es en sí eh, este, del uso de los non-phrases, solamente para que practiquemos un poco los Relative Clauses eh, y luego podemos utilizar estos en, uh, en este tipo de oraciones. Vamos a ver un segundo, ¿qué me pasó aquí? A ver, este es el de los Relative Clauses. Y aquí está el otro. Con los non phrases Aquí está. Estos son los tres enlaces. Primer enlace, información. Segundo enlace, este, eh, cuando utilizamos nosotros las palabras who, uh, that, eh, por ahí se incluye which, y creo que es solamente esa. Who, that, which. Eh, cuando nosotros este, utilizamos uh, las, las eh, cláusulas relativas. ¿Sí? Ahora, en el tercer enlace se encuentran ya directamente este, eh, ejercicios donde nosotros vamos a poner en práctica este, dentro de oraciones en sí las cláusulas relativas. Eh, estos ejercicios complétenlos eh, en casa tranquilamente. En el caso del ejercicio número uno y en el ejercicio número dos, que son el, primer, el segundo enlace, perdón, y el tercer enlace. Y la información pues, eh, del primer enlace solamente para que tengamos... Este, eh, una información de respaldo para, para el uso de, de, de las de los, eh, oraciones relativas, las cláusulas relativas, ¿de acuerdo? De acuerdo. Bien, Bien este, de momento nos vamos a quedar aquí, no sin antes eh, preguntar. Um, ¿Todos este, van al día con las actividades de la plataforma de inglés corporativo? ¿Todos ya lo, lo completaron? ¿Hay alguien que no haya completado, mejor dicho? Um, yo aún no, teacher, pero espero completarlo en realidad. Ángela, ¿tiene, tiene el 80%, por lo menos. Solo me falta la unidad 5 y una ¿Y parte de la ¿El cuatro. examen final ya lo completó? No, aún no. El, el examen final no. Bueno, porque lo que sucede es lo siguiente, y les preguntaba por, lo, por, por, por el siguiente motivo. Y el, este día jueves nosotros terminamos el curso. A pesar de que la plataforma les diga que tienen hasta el 5, creo, 4 de octubre, 
realmente este, el staff de inglés corporativo, este, no sé si brindó esa, esa, ese comunicado, pero sí es importante que lo terminen antes de que terminen las videoconferencias. O sea, si se pasan, es muy probable que no les generen este, el diploma. Así que antes del jueves, por favor, este, completar esos ejercicios para que por lo menos si llegamos al 80%, ya estamos libres y ya sabemos que vamos a pasar el módulo. ¿Sí? Ok, teacher. Muy bien. Mañana lo si, hay alguien más, si hay alguien más que... Este, bueno, Ángela. Este, si hay alguien más que tenga eh, problemas para completar ejercicios o, o cualquier cosa, escriban al grupo. Eh, entre ustedes yo he visto que se ayudan bastante, lo cual es bueno. Así que este, si alguien tiene una duda, pregunten en el grupo. Y ahí, pues, al, alguno de nuestros compañeros nos va a contestar. ¿De acuerdo? Bien, eso sería, todo por, eso sería todo por ahora. Así que este, eh, nos estaremos viendo el día de mañana. Mañana tenemos la última clase y el día jueves tenemos únicamente este, el repaso um, de los contenidos a través del eh, examen final que está propuesto en la plataforma de inglés corporativo. Así que pasen okay. este, una feliz noche. Cuídense. Bendiciones. Buenas noches. Hey, buenas noches. Bye. Bye. Buenas noches. Buenas noches a todos. Cuídense. Adiós.